check on my phone that we really are going live. This always worries me. It tells me that we're live. I don't believe it. Um, so if anybody's watching this, please let us know if me and my mother yeah. are with you. Because <laughs> I can't <laughs> tell on my channel yet. I've literally just hopped it straight from um, Lauren's uh, channel because she's doing a live in the lead up. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're almost like the after party, um, which is nice. Um, but yeah, let me just check and see if we are live. But yeah. Jeremy said we are. We are. <laughs> yeah, we are. There's a slight delay, that, which is very weird. Anyway, hello everyone. Sorry, that's the bit that always stresses me out. It's so lovely. To, there's 200 of you here already. Oh, wow. Um, in fact, I shouldn't say that because my mother will freak out. I hope you noticed that my mother Louise is here. As some of you may know her. HR. Hello everybody. <laughs> um, she's here and uh, she's got a halo behind her. I have. Uh, so no. appropriate. <laughs> Very <laughs> apt. Everyone's saying hi. Hello, Simon and his mum. I think you can call her Louise. I do now. <laughs> <laughs> so <Hello. laughs> we're here to talk about, oh, I've got to lift them up, uh, the, oh, they're really heavy, the 16 books. <laughs> it looks like you're doing some sort of exercise. This is really. the most exercise I've done all lockdown. <laughs> Don't knock yourself out, will you? <laughs> no, there we go. They're all here. Um, so, um, yeah, we're going to talk through the long list. Now, we will admit we've known for a little while, so it's not like our instant reaction exactly, but we will talk about that because I had quite a reaction at first. Um, did. I did. I can second that. Not like an awful, awful one. Anyway, so going through them in alphabetical order, we have... The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Small Pleasures. This is all going to go horribly wrong because I'm resting them on my knee. By Claire Chambers. <laughs> Pyronessy by Susanna Clark. Golden Rule by Amanda Craig. Exciting Times by... Now, I don't know how to pronounce this. So if any of you are from Ireland, can you let me know how to say it? Because I've said it as Naoi's, but I don't think that's right at all. Um, Dolan. Avni Dosh's Burnt Sugar. We have Dawn French's Because of You. I'm now going to drop these all over the floor. We've got um, Claire Fuller's Unsettled Ground. Sorry, Mum. No, <laughs> it's fine. It's good. Transcendent like Kingdom. Many of them. <laughs> by Yara Jassy. Luster by Raven Lalani. No one is talking about this. We are talking about this right now. <laughs> by Patricia Lockwood. Consent by Annabelle Lyon. Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon, I think is how you say that surname. Um, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. And finally, Ali Smith's Summer. So that is the list. Now, Mum, you go first while I put these down. What are your thoughts on this list? Well, I'm really, really, really excited. And I, I, the, the reason I'm so excited is because I have not read a single one of these books. Um, I've started one. I have started one. Um, yeah, I have started one, which um, I'm thoroughly enjoying, I have to say. Um, and there's only one author on that list who's, I've already read and that's Ali Smith so she's she's the only one that that you know I'm I'm already aware of and I just feel I just I trust the women's prize you know I know that the vast majority of these books I, I think I'll enjoy and they just seem to be such a there's a really eclectic mix there as you'd expect I suppose you know we're going to go to some extraordinary places I'm currently in Barbados that might give you a clue as to what I'm reading at the moment it's absolutely brilliant I'm on the edge of a seat um, I need to talk about that a little bit because I started that book and had to put it down because I found it quite yeah, traumatic. Yeah, yeah, but it is it's, it's it's superb. I think, and you know, for me, that's a re that to, I've got off to a flying start is all I can say. And there are quite a few books on there that I've been wanting to read for a while and haven't just because I've been reading other things. Um, so, for example, The Vanishing Half um, I've wanted to read and um, Burnt Sugar. When that came on the Booker shortlist, um, was it, yeah, it was on the shortlist, wasn't it? There we go. Look at him, very organised. Sixteen books, and it could order. 
my literally my laptop is precariously on a rose's tin and through jigsaw puzzles i mean it could all go to pot <laughs> so um i've just noticed tom's appeared hello tom <laughs> we'll be doing a live with tom on sunday yes exciting um so yeah no i i i feel really 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 excited by it and um yeah it's almost a case of i don't know where to start um i'll let you talk for a minute because i've got a couple of others that i'm really keen to to dip okay. into but some of them i've never even heard you know some of them i'd never come across before that is because, exciting when there's ones that i've not heard of before that always gets me excited but and i will be very honest when i first got the list i wasn't sure about it and it took me a little while and i think me and mum had a chat about this um when we on just sort of mum's live reactions, which if you're one of my Patreons, you'll see on Friday. Um, and it, it, I think it was, because you know when you get so excited about something and you go, you like, you overhype it in your head and you overhype it in your head and then it arrives and it's almost like that, oh, it's here. And then you kind of, so I think I had that initial, oh, I've been waiting for three ages on, now it's here and I don't quite know what to do with it. Um, and then I think I did that thing of, which I don't advocate and it wound me up like I did it myself. I, was, I did a bit of, well, that one's not on there. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't what know. Big but, issue. The, there are a few people who've commented that they're a bit disappointed on the chat thing. And I, and I, what should I call it? The chat thing. Thread. The chat thing. <laughs> She's very down with the kids. <laughs> it is the chat well, thing. Um, you were saying. The chat thread, yeah. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I think I think that's the thing because it becomes this fantastic guessing game. I mean, we we love to sort of try and second guess what's going to be on the list. So I think automatically you get a sense of oh, <laughs> you know, because because we all you know if you love reading, you love championing your favourite books and you yeah. love championing the best things you've read that year. But I but but when we were talking about it the other day, one of the th one of the things I said to you is I think, you know, I think. Um, that's what might create a sense of disappointment. But equally, isn't isn't it fantastic that there are so many quality books being written and, and published by women now? And I'm sure that that you know a lot of that is down to this prize. Yeah. Um I, I I you know, there were there were so many books that you and I had both wanted to see on that list. Genuinely disappointed they're not on the list, but we've now got these, or I have, these 16 what I'm sure will be amazing books to to to, to look forward to. I mean, it's just well. Also, uh, I think I switch on my, and this is going to sound really privileged and a bit wanky, but I switch on my judge brain, and then yeah. I sit. I've been in the meetings where you have to sometimes say goodbye to the books that you absolutely love because sometimes it becomes a bartering system, or it sometimes it becomes actually I could read this list of books and I could be like, well, these actually totally trounce any of the other books I've read. But also, when you have such a wealth of books, it makes it so hard. And I also know what it's like to be a judge when people are disappointed in the list, and you're like, but have you read them all yet? You've got so many exciting reads ahead of you, and yeah. I'm really sorry that you're... And actually, Elizabeth did a brilliant story earlier where she was like, I'm really sorry if you're not on the long list. It was one of the hardest things we've done. It was really difficult. We had to let some amazing books go. And because I haven't read every single one of these, I've only read three. Um, and this is also what I'm excited about when we're talking about this. This is, I think, the most level pegging we've been at a long list stage. Yeah. Bit. Well, you haven't, well, mums are arriving, I believe, tomorrow. Mum's got a whole long list arriving, which, speaking of which, I will have a hot, the Women's Prize has been very kind and have given me a whole long list to give away to one of you. So um, if you, um, I mean, there's going to be a question in a video on Friday that will relate back to a number that we mentioned in this video. And then there'll be another bit. And if you answer those two things, you basically, you'll be up for winning a whole long list, which is very, very generous of them. So, and they also send in mum one as well. Um, but I've now worked out where I'm going to start because I really oh. read Summer and I've read The Vanishing Half and Small Pleasures. So I'm now going to read by alphabetical order of author surname from Susanna Clark all the way down to Tori Peters, because it's going to give me just like a way of reading it. So it has completely changed how I was planning on vlogging. I was meant to be um, doing a vlog this week of reading mum's five favourite female authors and her favourite book of theirs that I had on my unread shelves. 
I'm going to be filming that over the next few weeks and then compiling it together into one video. Because she chose me the Robber Bride first, and it's quite big. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> Sorry so, about that. I did apologise. <laughs> well, yes, she did. She did, to be fair, and you'll all get to see that in a few weeks. So, um, yeah, I'm aware that I'm not. I'm not keeping up with people's. Um, comment so i apologize so if you've asked us a question do ask us again and i will try and keep my eyes on that as well i was watching lauren's as i said before she's got a disco outfit on she looks amazing um, and she's so good at getting to her comments and i'm always quite jealous when people do that because i'm dreadful um so talking about um i i'm looking forward to every single book now that i know more about them like genuinely i am really excited yeah. now i had my little moment and i got over it and, it, and again i think it wasn't I wasn't unhappy with this list. I just had a little bit of a moment where I was a bit, there's just a couple that I would have so passionately loved to see on the list that I don't think have had enough attention and might miss it. But that happens every year. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, if I wasn't being honest, then it wouldn't be right. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, quite a few people who are, are um, talking about how wonderful The Robber Bride is. So, you know, it might be a thick book, Simon, but it'll be worth it. It will be worth it. <laughs> I can handle it. See what I did there? Well, ha, ha, ha. You and your big mugs. <laughs> I'm so happy with this mug. Um, so, um, oh, somebody's leaving some very random comment that I don't know how to delete people. Block user. Yeah. Somebody was saying something very random. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so we've shown all the books already. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments which books out of these people think are the most me and mum. I think that would be really interesting. Not which ones are necessarily your favourites, although do tell us that, but which of these um, which of these are you kind of most... People are asking what they are again. Hang on. I'm going to do my workout. Mum, speak while I do this. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so nervous that you're going to drop them all. They're so here. Yeah trying to show you what all the um what all all the long lists i was gonna say prize winners well all the long lists it is like a prize though isn't it being on a long list it um, is. yeah well on all the long listed books there <laughs> um wow. do you know i'm getting a, i'm getting the feeling from the comments that are coming through i'm trying to sort of keep up with them um that that a lot of the people who are you know watching this this video yeah. um, are in our in a similar oh, position live. sorry yes we're live sorry we are live um they're in the a similar boat I, th I get the feeling that most people have perhaps only read one or two so i think yeah. it, i think it perhaps is causing quite a bit of surprise um, is exciting, about, that's exciting yeah. lauren i think lauren had read three um so yeah and we worked it out it's two a week before yeah. the shortlist is announced on the 23rd, we yeah. will, as always, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, I'm missing one. Somebody's just rightly pointed you, out. You, you are. You're missing the um, the how the the one armed sister sweeps the house. Oh yes, that's because I was half reading it. It's on my book trolley. Sorry, everybody. Uh, you're a trolley dolly. <laughs> it's on my trolley dolly upstairs. Um, I won't run and get it because I don't want to leave mummy in control. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's charming, that. Are you worried Sorry. about what I might say about you, love? <laughs> I am missing one. Um, but um, what was I going to say then? I've gone off on a tangent. People are saying that they think um, we'll like Detransition Baby and One Arm Sister. And um, quite a lot of people are talking about Pyronessi because yeah. it's unusual that a genre novel is on the list because I think it's a bit fantasy maybe. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, really looking forward to it because I I think it's going to be really, un, you know, it, I, I think it's going to be an unusual read. Um, I think it's going to mess with my head a bit in a, in a really good way. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And I think somebody said that it's quite difficult to define. Oh, that's exciting. Well, the blurb. Yeah, what it actually is. When, the, so, when it arrived and they come with a blurb and press release, I was like, I don't understand what this book's about at all. <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is quite interesting. I'm excited for Claire Fuller because I've been told that I will like her books a lot. Um, Luster has been everywhere, so I've been meaning to read that one. I'm also really excited about The Golden Rule. When we were doing Mum's Live Reaction, I didn't yeah. know about it. And it's all about um, 
women who meet on a train and decide to kill each other's husbands. Oh, that's right. I thought that sounded amazing. And I, and then, then I was a bit worried about why I did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a bit concerning. I think there's a few yeah. mother-daughter relationships in this book. Um, Burnt Sugar, a mother-daughter one as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, and which which is the one that um, uh, has lots and lots of sort of unlikable characters? Oh. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember yeah, that. I, I can't hold 16 books in my head at once. Yeah, well, no, once you've read them. Once you've read them, you will. Um, people say that they're very confused. Well, no, sorry, actually. Mariana said she was, loved and was very confused by Paranassi, but highly recommends it. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, exciting times. People are asking question marks. Yes, I'm looking forward to that one. That's about a woman who I think goes to Japan with a boyfriend, he goes away and she falls in love with another woman and it's then what does she do? Oh, okay. To Sally Rooney. Dawn French is about, um, because of you is about, sorry, I'll do I'll do a very quick overview for people because lots of people are saying they don't know what the list is. The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett is about twin sisters and they run away from home. One can pass as white and the other carries on as a black woman and we learn about their futures. Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers is all about, um, it's in the 1950s and it's about a woman who is working for a newspaper and hears about a woman who thinks she had an immaculate conception while she was in a sanatorium. Oh, that sounds brilliant. I mean, I just, I'm there already, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I've read that one. Um, Piracy oh. is the one we can't quite work out what it's about. Amanda Craig's The Golden Rule is about two women who agreed to murder their husbands, the other one's husbands, exciting times I've mentioned. Also, I will link all of these down below in the description box because I put this up in advance and had it waiting. I couldn't put the long list in because I would have broken the NDA and been sued. <laughs> and I didn't want that. Um, then we have uh, Burnt Sugar, which Mum's mentioned is about mother and daughter. It's meant to be like you've walked in on them in some really awkward conversations. The mother's, I think, has been quite difficult and now has uh, is, has early dementia, and so they're swapping roles or, or caring roles. And I don't know whether it might be about revenge. So Ooh. interesting for me and Mumtree. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, maybe you couldn't read that one. <laughs> Dawn French is becoming... Okay, revenge on whom? <laughs> <laughs> Dawn French is, because of you, is all about... Um, two women who give birth on the same day, one leaves with a child and one doesn't. Um, and it's what happens after that. Claire Fuller's is about siblings who are in their 40s, who have been living with their mother in this kind of decrepit, crumbling, hoardery old house. She dies and it's what happens to them afterwards. Yar Jassy's Transcendent Kingdom, I think is about a woman finding out about the past of her family and how they came from Africa to America and some of the dark history around that. Luster is about a black woman having a, a young black woman having an affair with a white married man, and she ends up moving into his marital home. That's going to be interesting. Mm. No one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood. I think it's about social media, and then someone who lives online, but then something in real life happens that drags them out into real life. Consent is another murder, but it's two women who've been murdered, possibly by their partners, and their sisters decide to investigate. Um, nothing but Blue Sky, which is the one I'd heard nothing about, mm. uh, is by Kathleen McHunt, and that is about a man whose wife dies, and afterwards he finds a few secrets out, and it's like, was his whole marriage what he thought it was? How how he deals with that? I've missed how the one on Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherry Jones. That's about three different women in Barbados, and it is traumatic. It's how I found it too much when I started reading it last week, but I'm going to go back to it. Yeah, you see, I, I've been reading, well, I started reading it, I think it was Sunday, and I haven't had a lot of time this week to read, but um, but I am finding I can't put it down. I, I actually would really like to feel that I could sit and finish it tonight because it's... Well, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice having you. Yeah. Um, and then the final two, um, before we go back to people's comments because I'm aware that I keep missing them because I keep looking at the list because I can't stop. Um, it, our Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, which is about a man who transitions to become a trans woman and then transitions back and gets their boss pregnant. So, and then they start to have, try and have a newfound family with, 
I think one of their previous partners who may also be a trans woman. Um, and then Summer by Ali Smith is kind of an, a culmination of all of the previous books, but you can read it on its own in the seasonal quartet. Um, and it's about brothers and sisters, Brexit, the pandemic, and more. Did I do all right? That was quite a good quick. It, did, it was very good for you, yeah. Well done. <laughs> She's so rude. Um, lots of people are very sad about Love After Love. I'm sad about Love After yeah, Love. Yeah, me too. The others. So I can't. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, you know, I, I noticed that there's quite a few people feeling like that. And thank you, because quite a few people have said it's exciting times that is the book with the, um, with the sort of negative, unappealing characters. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. I can't like an unappealing character. Oh, I do. I, I, in fact, I think very often I prefer books that are about nasty people. <laughs> have you watched... Um, That's quite I'm fascinated. Have you watched the film I Care A Lot, starring... No. Rosamund Pike, it's on Prime, yeah. it's amazing because all the characters are horrible and yet you sort of root for some of them. Yeah, you see, I, when, when it does, you know, things like Breaking Bad were, you completely disapprove of, of what the characters are doing. Yeah. But yet, you, you, you know, you're empathising with them and I, I just, I find that, you know, it happens a lot in fiction too, doesn't it, where you're kind of, you know, you're, you're, you find yourself siding with, well, with a murderer or whatever it might be. Uh, whereas in, you know, in reality, that probably that might not happen. I don't know, I've never met a murderer, so as far as I know. So I, have. I don't know. I so have, I've, again. I've met a couple of murderers. Have you? Oh, yeah, you've been in prisons, haven't you? I worked in a prison library, yes. And uh, the thing with murderers, it's really interesting, we're going off on a tangent, but it is my channel and that happens quite often, is um, I was talking to the staff there and People who murder generally do it in, in very extreme circumstances. Like the, the stuff we see in the press is not normal at yeah. all. Actually, that's something I think people forget about news. The reasons it's news is because it's new um, and because it's different. But um, and but I was told by both a police officer and a um, member of staff that they that murderers will be hired in libraries in prisons because they're more trustworthy because they are likely to be a one-off crime of an extreme reason it's not doesn't make it right but it's something extreme whereas burglars they don't because that's pr much more premeditated and much more about multiple anyway moving on that was a random chat no, no, no. i just um who was it who commented yeah cindy said was saying that um she was really sad the liar's dictionary wasn't on there um and I, you know again i, I read that was it last week or the week before? And I, I, I thought it was so witty and clever. Um, that scene with the yeah. flamingo, not the flamingo, the pelican. Is oh, it's just, it, yeah. I, I mean, I'll never forget that. It's great, that book. And um, what was the other thing I was going to say then? Um, so are there any that stand out to you, Mum, that you're most keen to get to first? Um, I think... You see, you, you were saying you've got an order to read them in. I can't do that. I have to read on impulse and mood. I, don't, I, don't I, think, I'm, I think I'm going into it in judge mode slightly. And that's yeah, I, could, I can't be that systematic. It'll just be a case of I'll, I'll pick one and then, and then I'll look at the list again and think, oh, I'm in the mood for that one. Because if I've just read a, a novel that's set in Barbados... You know, I'll probably want to read something very, very different. And also, you know, there's another book, at least one other book on the list that's to do with sort of murder and crime and whatever. I won't probably won't want to read that one after this one. Do you see what I mean? It'll be, it'll very much be to do with genre and topic and and but also. Setting, I think without spoiling anything for Sunday's Live with me, you and Tom, there is one title here that isn't in the top half that matches a prompt. For oh, okay. Combination. So actually I might push that one up a little bit. Also, one thing that we haven't mentioned, which is super duper exciting to do with the Women's Prize, is yeah. that on April the 5th, Mum and I will be live on this channel with Maggie O'Farrell, who was last year's winner. So that's going to be really, really, really exciting. We're really, really, really looking forward. Very, very, um, I, so, well, I'll just, I'm, I'm going to be starstruck. That's that's my big worry. 
Mom, you see me all the time. Ho, oh, ha, ha. <laughs> Sadly, it... I don't really at the moment. You want sorry? Sadly, I don't really. Well, you do want to work a little bit. Yeah, if... no, I meant because of lockdown. Anyway, <laughs> go on. And also, I noticed that a few people have mentioned Full of the Stars, which I've not read yet. And I do wonder that I was thinking about this just a bit. And I do wonder if these are books that are very much away from the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that will have affected reading at all, who can say? But also somebody said that it was snubbed. And I will say, I don't believe any book by that lineup of judges will have been snubbed. They will have discussed them. So, I mean, as a judge, you spend hours discussing okay. the costas. We literally, um, we discussed the six books or five books for four and a half hours. Like it's yeah. a, a huge process. You really, really spend hours and hours. And that's where like somebody will say something, you go, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Maybe that isn't quite as good as that in that way or whatever. So I don't think any of that would been done intentionally. But I think the only thing I will say is there's not that many independent presses. It's very big publisher heavy. Mm, I hadn't thought about it from that perspective, actually. It's about yeah. six books from Penguin alone. Um, mm. with like a third of the list. That's quite a big chunk of books really typical one though isn't it because you because you you know you're going on the book aren't you and yes you know it's it's i think that's I, I could i fully understand your point but i think it's i think it's tricky because you've got you can't you can't you know the judges can't factor that in can they no no and that's why it's so weird for me because i sit with two heads on almost because part of my brain is like well they've literally sat talked about these for hours and hours and hours because i think there's over a hundred and something books submitted in total um so they will have had this conversation although i didn't realize each publisher and this is something else to remember when you're thinking that the judges haven't put a book forward publishers are only allowed to put two books forward each mm. so if you think about it like which is interesting, but, but that's per imprint before anybody says, but you've just said there's six Penguin books on there. But what I mean is per imprint, you're only allowed to put two books each, so that can also be quite a, a tricky one. Lots of people are very happy to see D Transition Baby on there, so that's really, really Yeah, good. yeah. I um, and Valdine just asked that question, is it true publishers are only allowed to nominate two books? Unless, the only other exception, and this is like the booker, if an author has been shortlisted before, they automatically get entered again, which is actually a rule I don't agree with because that means the same names end up in the ring right so yeah. I don't, but again you know that's me just being very finickety and i think it's interesting as well because i love the fact that um we re, we sort of both of us look at it in really different ways because part of me will be industry brain whereas i love the fact that you're like as a you're just a dedicated reader who looked you know what i mean yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I'm just looking at it from the point of view of reading. And, and uh, you know, there are lots of comments coming up as well about this idea of it being wonderful that they're all fresh, you know, novels to them. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that aspect of it is really exciting. Yeah. That's interesting. Rebecca, uh, sorry, I, can't, I haven't got my glasses on. Rebecca Bleeding, yeah. Saying that... Um, she feels there's more contemporary fiction this year and more historical fiction last year. Is there any historical fiction at all on that list? Um, well, Small Pleasures is because it's 1950s. Right. Um, you see, ooh. to me, that's not historical. Well, I don't know, because... <laughs> I mean, it is. I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> <I'm just> saying, <laughs> 2000 is now historical, which Dawn French is set on yeah. the millennium. Um, I think some of them are, but you're right, a lot of it is very current, and a lot mm. of current issues, which I think is interesting. Somebody was asking which of these authors have been longlisted before. I think only one of the, um, it's, it's if you're shortlisted that you automatically can be put forward, not not you don't automatically get listed again, but um, Ali Smith's won it before. So she mm. won, back, and that was also quite a surprise, because there was a rumour that Ali Smith was not was being- it hard to be both? You what, yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. So um, somebody Sorry. said, I don't think there's any translated fiction. Translated fiction, like short story collections, aren't eligible for the prize. So it's a book that is um, by an author who writes in English first. Right. English is Jenny, um, Jenny Guinevere is saying that she thinks that Ali Smith took her name out of the hat for the Booker Prize, but not the Women's Prize. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder if that's her decision or the publisher's decision or I think what you're saying. 
Yeah, go on. I thought she wasn't being put forward at all for any. That's what I thought, which is why I was surprised when this was on the list. Also, mm -hmm. I have to admit, because summer last year seems like so long ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth, I'd forgotten it was eligible. <laughs> <laughs> last summer. Yeah. <laughs> it was a pandemic. <laughs> so, yeah. But I did, I, I make the more the more time I spend have spent with this list, because we've known since Friday, the more time that I've spent with it, and we're very good at keeping secrets. So um, Mum was worried that we weren't allowed to say that, but we're just not allowed to say what the list is before it's yeah. live, but we could talk to each other about it. Um, lots of people saying about Australian fiction, and yes, I was that was another one that I, I would have loved The Weekend by Charlotte Wood to have been on this list. And actually, oh, yes. I you think... I think Australian fiction is just going under the radar on way too many prizes. I'm almost tempted to start a prize for Australian fiction in the UK. No, no <laughs> do it. Haven't got, you are? Do it. <laughs> no, I haven't got quite the time. If you remember, Mum, I did use to five run. minutes. <laughs> I did used to run a prize and it was quite exhausting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I stopped. Um, so sorry, I asked earlier and I didn't see everybody's comments on um, books that they were either the most excited about or the books that they think are the most us. And I will keep my eyes on the prize, on the question, eyes on the prize, eyes on the questions now. But I did also just want to say um, that I will link, once this is live, I'll link all of the books down below so that you can see it. And the number that you need for um, the next video which will be part of a question that means you can win one set of the longest, one of you can win it, is the amount of books that Mum and I have read so far, which I think equates to 3.5 or 4. Because you've read half of yeah. the one, how the one on Sister Sweeps the House, and I've read half of it, so that's one. And then I've read Ali Smith, Small Pleasures and the Vanishing Half, so that's four books. So that's the number that you need to know for the video on Friday, oh. you'll have to then answer another bit of the question. That's me, just being um, being tricky. Um, people are excited about Small Pleasures because I loved it, which has been, sorry to give that away, Mum, it was in my latest vlog. No, it's uh, fine, it's fine. We watch, uh, you know. You what, sorry? We watch, you know, on and off. <laughs> Wouldn't bother. Wouldn't bother, I don't rate it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, somebody's it's, asking whether you've read um, I've Heard a Room Called Earth. I haven't. I've got it to read in, on my birthday week in a couple of weeks because um, that week I'm reading just by whim, apart from I will read two off this list because I need to read two at a time as well. Now. Um, and I know it's by a um, neuro... Is it neurodiverse or neurodivergent? I can't remember what the term is. Author, okay. and it's about a character... Um, and I really, really do want to get to that. So I would have liked to, to have read that. People are really excited about um, Consent and think it could be a savage book. Oh. Somebody, good. Jacqueline's asking, um, when's the shortlist? April the 20th. April, isn't it? Shortlist. And yeah. they've now moved the winning date back to the 7th of July. And I think that's because they want to do a party. And because of the roadmap in England, we're all allowed to go clubbing from the 21st of June. <laughs> so on the 7th of July, me and Mum will be going to the party and then going clubbing. <laughs> we will. We've done it before. Book clubbing, I think, is more likely for us, if I'm honest. Speak for yourself. We've not been clubbing together since I was 18. Is that when it was? The last yeah. time? That's disgraceful. That's twenty. That'll be twenty-one years ago. Oh my! Yeah. God. Oh, yeah. let's move swiftly on. Um, people are excited for the one-armed sister. Um, oh, Heather's. This is interesting. Heather's bookshelf says she's a bit disappointed because there aren't that many that were on people's predictions videos, and that's interesting because I'm wondering if, as someone who, do, I mean, I cheat dreadfully in my predictions video. I never do 16. Like, um, Lauren did 16, Mercedes did 16, and Eric and Anna both did 16 each. I think I did 25. <laughs> <laughs> even when I was doing that, I was still throwing the odd title in my <laughs> for shortlisted books. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Um, Looks like we're all going book clubbing. I know. I'm wondering if we should... Have we just invented something? I might have. 
I wonder actually if that's what we should call our live events with uh, Maggie and Jess, book clubbing with. Yeah, well, I really like that idea. Well, Ooh. we can have a book club that ends with a kitchen disco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for it. That would be lovely. Well, one of the things that I want to do, um, and I'm just... I can get my disco ball out. Okay. <laughs> I went upstairs actually, I could get by now. Um, but also, um, one of the things I actually really, really want to do, and I might treat myself for my birthday, is I really want to get some decks and learn how to DJ. Ooh. There we are. That could yeah. be. There's a thing, yeah, quite. Who wants to come book clubbing? Right, there's going to be yeah. a night in London on the 7th of July where me and mum will go to a club. We'll see you all there. Bring a book. <laughs> Actually, books would be quite good because if you got too hot, you could just fan yourself with Thank it. You, fan. you could fan. dance in the style of a character. <laughs> there can only be songs that are uh, book titles. It'd be an amazing yeah. night, anyway. And um, somebody's just asked when, party sorted. Somebody's just asked when Crime Time with Pip is. That'll be early April. And um, Pip is working on one of the most incredible projects that's going to launch not next week, the week after. Um, she is working on an illumination walk around the whole of Liverpool, and it's so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, well, that sounds amazing. It's like one of the biggest projects you could manage, so that's why we're not doing lives with her at the moment, because we're just... <laughs> well, she's very busy, and I'm trying to sort out stuff with my job and so that I can have a week off. Um, I love what Jenny's saying. She says we should just listen to Kate Bush over and over again. <laughs> that sounds slightly like it could become a night. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Isar, and we need to normalise reading in bars. When I've been to America, not to New York actually, but when I've been to other bits of America, they have bookshops that are also bars. Oh, right. they're lovely. So you can have a cocktail or two, and then you end up buying loads of books. There's a fantastic pub in Cornwall. What was it called? It got a really good, good name that was a bookshop and pub when I was on holiday. It was called Beowulf. Oh, clever. Get it? Beowulf, yeah. And it, it was great. You know, you could sit there with your beer and you could go and browse the books at the same, you know, simultaneously. Oh, no. Well, um, Rebecca Bleeden has said that a book bar has just opened in London. Oh. There we are then. That's where we'll be. That's on trend, Simon. <laughs> that's where we'll be after the party. That's where the after party of savages will be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming we're going to get invited. We might not. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I'm aware that it's almost seven o'clock, so we can end at seven. So we've got 13 more minutes, if that's all right with you, Mum. Um, yeah. So you're going to head to – you're currently reading the one-armed – how the one-armed sister sweeps her house. Is there one out of all of these that you kind of think might be the next one? Well, I think that's difficult. I just, I'm just so curious about Piranesi, I think. I suspect that might be where I go next. But also, I've been wanting to read Burnt Sugar for quite a while. Mm. So I could go there. Oh, I don't, oh, I, I mean, it's just, I think I won't know until I've got them in front of me. Um, right. Which uh, is the book that's bright green? I know the colour shouldn't matter. Isn't it interesting how book covers, if, you know, can can... I mean, that's what they're designed to do, isn't it? Influence you. What's it called? Oh, right. Transcendent Kingdom. That's right. So, you know, I wonder, that that's kind of drawing me in. I don't know why. Remind, yeah. remind me what the... That's the one about the young girl who um, wants to know the story of their journey from Ghana to Alabama. There you go. Yeah, you um, see, I, I like, you know, that that that's drawing me, I think. And I knew nothing about that book, you know, I hadn't heard about it. So I just don't know. Detransition Baby fascinates me as well. Yeah. I'm intrigued by Transcendent Kingdom because I didn't love Yard Jass's first book, but I think it was because it was so hyped, I was expecting it to be. I mean, if I'm going to go with the rule that I've come up with, which is to read an alphabetical order by author, and I've already read Britt Brennan and Claire Chambers, my next one should be Pyronesse. Also, and I think this is what they do on the cover. I'm not sure. Oh my God, yeah, I forgot about this. Get ready for the actual hardback. It spells. Oh, wow. You see, that's the dancing fawn from Pompeii, I think. Well, I thought, was it anything to do with Greek? Greek but 
I'm assuming not. Yeah, no. I mean, no. Well, I don't know. I won't know till I've read it. No. <laughs> Somebody, Enid, says that Transcendental Kingdom's wonderful. Yeah, but there's, there's a few. Yeah. In Craze books also said that's amazing. Yeah. Um, Anna James, who we love, who does videos with the lovely Eric, um, she loved Transcendent Kingdom, so that's another good sign. So, yeah, I think there's going to be some real corkers in here. And like I said, the well, more... apparently, sorry to interrupt you, but the, Kristen says the statues are really important in Piranesi. So that's probably why that figures there on the cover. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the actual main character might be a fawn. Well, we'll, we'll know. We'll know. I know that yeah. the characters are called Other and Dead. So it's going to be quite different, I think. Really, really different. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting. Some people are saying that there's a few books I've spotted as it's gone on that some people have like been sad that Sarah Moss hasn't been on there, that Karis Davis hasn't been on there, that Little Scratch isn't on there. There is a word limit, uh, a minimum word count. And I wonder if some books oh, yeah. because they're technically yeah. novellas. So that might also be it. But again, like we said, if only two books per publisher are being put forward, who knows what the books are that go, that go forward. And we've got people from Japan here and all sorts. I know, I saw that. It's so amazing. It, yeah. It's, and that's something that I really, really love. Oh, Louise, we won't do any spoilers for Pyronessi because we've not read it. <laughs> <laughs> We can't. Um, but no, I'm um, I'm really, really, um, I'm really looking forward to getting to all of these. Um, so we should say that we will be back on Sunday, I think at five o'clock we've agreed with Tom, haven't we, to do a live on Sunday. We'll, we'll let people know. I'll put it in the calendar. Like, you are? It's on my calendar. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, and that's because we'll be doing the um, announcement of the spring hibernation dates, which I've already announced anyway, but, but we'll talk about that more in detail, and also um, what the prompts are and what the group read is. And actually, I think it's going to be interesting because I want to ask people what they think constitutes a short book. How many pages is a short book? Because that might link into spring hibernation if any of these books are short enough. <laughs> So, um, so, yeah, so there we go. Anyway, um, we're going to head off. Um, it's been lo I can't believe there have been over 400 of you watching. That's just wow. awesome. So thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Um, and, um, yeah, we're going to be doing – we'll do a video where we catch up with our predictions for the shortlist. I don't know if we should try and do, like, a, mid some, a video somewhere in the middle, maybe. We'll see. But, actually, that's not going to be long, the shortlist. Um, no, exactly. It's, it's all quite – yeah. Well, we'll see how we go. Yeah. Um, and um, so, yeah, we'll be back with, I think, a pre-recorded video where we pick our shortlist out of, like, hope, I mean, we might even be able to do it in real life because it'll be gone April the 12th. But we'll so see. nice, wouldn't it? Um, we might have to do it at a park where we've just got bags of books. <laughs> <and it's laughs> now each. But I love doing that when we, when we slowly but surely revealed. Yeah, I do as well. So um, we'll definitely do that. know what the other's chosen, which is great. I love that. Exactly. And then uh, we'll be doing our final prediction of what we think is our personal winner. Will we agree? Will we disagree? There hasn't been a year yet where it's been the same. It's been, oh no, actually last year it was. I lie. Last year we both predicted Hamnet. Um, yes, we did. Way. And it was. And on that note, just a reminder that on April the 5th, live on this channel, myself, my mum and Maggie O'Farrell will be in conversation for a night of, and we're going to use this now, Book clubbing with Maggie O'Farrell, <laughs> <laughs> and see how that goes. Maybe we can start a whole series of literary um, events around the country that we host once this is all over, Mum. Books That'll and clubbing—that'd that be good be fun. If anyone that. wants to sponsor that, get in touch. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, but thank you everyone for watching. Um, we're looking forward to reading it. Mum's on Instagram, um, so I'm sure she'll be talking about the books on there as well as yeah. I will be. We'll do, like I said, the shortlist event before April the 23rd and our winner prediction before the 7th of July, which I've just got worried is Chris's birthday. No, it's not. It's the 11th of July. Um, so that really, Hello, You're all right. That would have been awkward. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. 
Um, but um, anyway, on that note, it's been lovely. Um, Mum, stay on because we can chat after this. Um, okay. And um, yeah, thank you all so much. I hate this end bit. I waffle on for ages. Start talking about something again and can't shut up. Strange, isn't it? Because you've not got the social cues that you would no. normally have when you leave. You know, can a you party or a you just start. Going... <laughs> There we go. That's the silence all over. But thank you all so much, and um, we will speak to you all soon. Ending the broadcast now. I am really now. Bye.